Hey, what's up guys? This is John from the Reaper blog. In this video, let's talk about the 24-bit uh, versus 32-bit recording format. And I'm going to talk about why you might not want to use the 32-bit format for recording. So let's start with uh, the project set at 24-bit. And I'm going to record some bass. I'm just going to turn up my preamp until it clips. Let's uh, monitor that. You hear that distortion. All right. That's not a good signal to record. It sounds terrible. Right? So don't do that. Now we could just turn this down, right? But that distortion's still there. You can't remove that. And that's why you turn down the preamp, set your signal to be much lower. There. No higher than minus six. The preamp's not distorting, converters aren't distorting, and you get a nice clean signal with plenty of headroom to apply processing later. Now, there's this idea of 32-bit floating point, which gives you uh, an extra eight bits of headroom past zero that doesn't work with analog inputs. And I'll show you why. Let's open up our project settings and set this to 32-bit floating point. Okay. So. All right, so it's distorting again. Hit record. Now the idea is that when you play it back, you can normalize it and remove the clipping. All right, so it's peaking at 0, 0.0. Let's double click this, normalize, apply, nothing happened. And that's because 32-bit floating point, you can't use those extra bits on an analog input because it doesn't know how to reconstruct the signal at a lower amplitude. But it will work with virtual instruments, sources that originated within the computer. So let's go back to 24-bit. I'm going to play this clip from uh, Addictive Drums, and let's make it distort on the track. There, it's peaking at plus 8. And I'm sorry for your headphones or speakers. But anyways, it's distorting and it's peaking at plus 8. So let's double check our uh, render formats here. 24-bit um, wave. Yeah, let's double check this. Be recording format. All right. So now we're going to render. Let's render this as a stereo stem. All right. And again, that's going to be loud. Now, this is peaking at zero, not at plus eight. Let's delete that. Bring back our original file. Go to 32-bit float. Set this to recording format. Set this to 32-bit, just in case. All right, so we take this track. We render it to a stereo stem. And see it's peaking at plus eight. Play it back. It's going to be loud. The meter is now at plus eight instead of at zero. So it's not clipped off at zero. So now if we turn this file down, it still looks clipped until you zoom in. See? Peaks. That's amazing. And you will actually hear that in the signal. The really nasty distortion is all gone. Now, these waveforms are not accurate until you zoom in to a certain amount and it reads the actual file. Peak files are temp files and they are uh, not always accurate. So, you can undo that distortion. And unlike 
the analog signal, you cannot repair that clipped signal. Alright, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Why 32-bit float makes sense within the DAW. Um, on the other hand, if you can gain stage your, your files, if you just turn down your master output of your virtual instruments to, let's say, minus 12, you'd have lots of headroom just like an analog signal, and you'd never run into clipping anyways. Uh, that's actually the way I work. I keep it at 24-bit, and occasionally I'll use a 32-bit float rendering format. But generally speaking, I keep it at 24-bit. It saves some hard drive space. It, uh, it's a little bit lower load on the computer. If you wanted to use 32-bit floating point um, and you're working with mostly synths and you're doing a lot of rendering, then it makes sense. But uh, if you are keeping the synths live or keeping a good analog style gain staging throughout the mixer, then 32-bit float is really not necessary. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all these videos, and check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials. Thanks guys, bye.